John here again, and in another video, this time got the trusted Vic out using a new power supply. And the reason why I've got the Vic out, well, I've got some clever bits for it now. Got its own SD to IEC, it's got its own reset switch now. Is this we're going to talk about this now when I was a child and my folks bought not this one the one that my folks have bought is stored away nicely because it's a it's a first generation VIC 20 with the pet style keyboard worth a lot of money you've seen it it's on one of my videos but they after they, my f parents had watched me code using BASIC and getting frustrated because the sort of things I was doing, it was taking time and, and stuff like that. My folks bought me one of these, which is a machine language monitoring cartridge. And basically it was a, it's a cartridge that allows you to program directly into the memory using machine code and this was the first um, time I had experienced programming in machine code so with the um, book um, where is it where is that book one Go. with this but it was Vic revealed it was the Vic revealed and it was also mastering the Vic as well I can't see that book I know I've got it somewhere but mainly Vic revealed I if that's it there anyway but um, it was that and mastering the Vic 20 that me folks had bought I started to learn to program in this so still got me book look so here's my little instruction book and it's got uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 commands and as you can see it's only 15 pages it's only 15 pages and this look even me uh, folks's address on it and even back then you know it was a daunting task to program machine code but that just using this book, this booklet, and this cartridge, I learnt how to program machine code for Vic 20. And what I thought would I would do is I would basically show you what this machine code monitor did, yeah, and then try and code our very own. And the reason why, the reason why I want to do, the reason why I think it'd be good for doing that is then, you know, we'd we'd be, you would be able to understand how to write a disassembler, how to write an assembler, how to do all the hex dumps and all that, and learn something on the way. And I think this would be a quite neat little project. And it's all basically down to this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this into the 60, uh, 64 the Vic so let's plug it into the back give it a good push because yeah the Vic's renowned for not wanting cartridges plugged in there we 
go. And switch the power on. Here we go. And what we're going to do is uh, we'll switch we'll switch to the catch card and then I'll take you through the machine code monitor cartridge to give you a, a, an understanding of what we're going to code um, in our next project right so we're going to switch to the uh, going to switch to the, the catch code and away we go so switch her on there you go right then um, so the Vic's on and if I uh, go back to my book it's right there's two ways of starting the monitor and it's SYS 64096 Ah, right, so that one don't know. Okay, so SYS two four five 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 seven six. There we go. So this is the uh, basic this basic this is the command line structure. So as you can see we we print out of, we, can, we print out four digit hex numbers, two digit hex numbers, and we have the prompt and um, the semicolon. Now, the semicolon is to be able to uh, affect the, the, the registers, so we should be able to be able to change the accumulator to be 10 press enter so if I do R which is registers there we are we've got 10 in the register so we need to be able to so in, the, in, in what we need to do is to be able to mimic the same commands as this so we'll go through the the typical command so here we go disassemble so we're going to disassemble uh, we're going to disassemble basic so there we go so this is all gunk because of the tokenizer and then we've got all the keywords so I'm just trying to remember where we start I think it was C2000 I think it is roughly somewhere around there but this is all the keywords and everything here we go this is looking no, it's still it's still text still text Uh, let's do D C five one. This is better. So this is disassembling the memory. So we're starting at C five hundred, and we're just tapping the down arrow to make it scroll up. But the beauty of this uh, this machine code monitor, if you if you scroll up, it scrolls up the memory as well and I thought that was so cool when I first had it so this D allows you to disassemble the uh, machine code fill which is F so we can fill 1000 to 1050 with AA Right, so if I do memory 1000, should be all AAs, there you go, up to 50. And then it should drop to 0, FF, 0, FF, there you go. So that's fill. Go, well, that's self explanatory, we, but we ain't got a pro program to uh, do. We've got H for hunt, so we can hunt, let's hunt C1000 for, let me. I think C thousand for um, I think it's single quote if you want to take so CBM I think it was CBM oh hang on 
Hang on. Point C thousand. C thousand one hundred. Four. Ooh. That's not found it. Is it single quotes or double quote? Where's me Where's me book? Right, here we go. Nah. H C thousand. Comma C one hundred. Comma single quote. C Well, maybe it can't find it. Oh, okay. Let's do hunt. C thousand space FF FFFF F -F -F -F. four basic. There we go. So th what this is doing is it's sh it's telling us where the word basic is so we should be able to i which is to interpret if we interpret c thousand at c thousand and seven we should see the word basic there we go basic and so um at e four four oh so if we do i e four hundred at four forty we should see the word basic as well they are basic so that's I, which is interpret, and that basically uh, interprets the memory. So that's hunt, interpret, load, self-explanatory, memory I've just done. So if I do memory E440, where basic is, it gives us the ASCII values for it. Uh, number allows you to, to renumber some code and, and with an offset, so you can have some code in dollar one thousand and renumber it for dollar two thousand but leave it in dollar one thousand registry we know about which is R um, save self-explanatory transfer that's where we can transfer a block of memory onto another block of memory so transfer one thousand to one one oh oh two one six oh oh there you go so if I do a memory now one five F O we should see it's gone to A A A A because that's where the memory we copied. There you go. Um walk that's allows us to single point execution of a program and X which is execute. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna write a little program. Where is it? Where's that program? I'm gonna write a little program to um, to show off the assembler. Now the assembler is not like an assembler in Proj, uh, PRG, uh, CBM PRG Studio because you have to write it directly into memory and the way to do it is you type in um, A1000 so that's where you're going to type and then you just type in the command so LDA uh, hash dollar Three JSR fifty two and LDY hash dollar zero zero LDX hash dollar zero zero and LDA hash dollar twenty and JSR dollar FFD two. Ooh, 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 ooh. FFD two. Yeah, I thought it might go a bit wrong there. Wait. Yeah, that's got wrong because it's got the question mark at the end. There we go. INX CPX hash dollar FC. Uh, branch is not equal to dollar one thousand or not nine and i n y c p y 
cash. Cash dollar. One, two. Go, this must be really boring. DM nine. And we'll call it a day there. Return. So we've created some code, so we'll disassemble one thousand. There you go. So what we're gonna do now is gonna go go one thousand. That is because I put an RTS, and you're not supposed to put an RTS. Two, four, five, seven, six. Disassemble one thousand. Yeah, there it is. It's still there. Right, because you're not supposed to put an RTS. What you're supposed to do when you're in the machine code monitor, you're supposed to put a break. And we'll put another one just to make sure. So now if I scroll down and then scroll back up, there you go, I've got breakpoints. Right, so let's try again. Go 1000. There we go. So all that's done is just cleared the screen, I think put some spaces in. LDA 20, yes, yeah, put, put spaces in. So what we'll try and do is we'll we'll get we'll disassemble it. Okay, jumping look at it jumping more than one space. Now we'll change that to 31. That should put ones in. Right, so go. Let's go a bit further up. Go 1000. There you go. Loads of ones. And that's what we're going to try and replicate in this um, in this series is basically to write a machine code program. But there's there's a couple of things here that could be pretty tricky, which are going to be pretty um, clever to try and work out. Like walk. So walk one thousand. And what it does is it walks through the code law. Walks through the code. And it shows you exactly what it does. It's just walking through the code. So just to clear the screen look, it's doing all this and then it goes, jumps back to mine look, it's gone back to 1000 and now we're printing out a number, a character one and then it'll jump back again. There you go, it's gone back to mine. And that's and then you press run stopped. Now that's gonna be interesting trying to figure out how to do that. Because you should be able to walk through it and uh, allows you to manipulate the things. So I, what we're going to do is we're going to create a machine code monitor. We'll create it for the VIC to start with, and then we'll make sure that we put compatible code in to make it work for the 64. For the 64, it's going to be slightly different because the 64's got more screen space, so we can have more information on the screen, and so we, it'll be it's going to be uh, interesting to to uh, make sure that. The, assemble, the, the code can be used for both the 64 and the VIC um, without any hitch and possibly you know the C16 but I'm not too sure about the, the ROM routines on the C16 but we'll definitely do it for the VIC and the 64 so with that this is the first of in the, in the uh, machine code monitor coding series and I hope this will be interesting for you. Take care. Bye. I'd like to thank all the Patreons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.